In this video I will give a brief overview of my design approach uh, designing the propulsion system for my solar kayak. These four components represent the main subsystems that all need to be analyzed. This is the hull and the powertrain consists of the solar panel, a DC brushed motor and the propeller. This video will be followed up by a series of in-depth videos where I look at each shop system separately. I'll be using this motor together with uh, another small solar panel, do some actual tests. Now before I continue, I do realize that uh, this is the simplest form of implementing propulsion. It is not the easiest to optimize. There are different ways of improving the system. You can, for instance, add a maximum power point tracker. You can add batteries. It all depends on the application, the budget, etc. In my case, this was uh, designed for a solar boat race. So that automatically ruled out the battery. And at the time, budget constraints ruled out a maximum power point tracker. Now, the hull, the panel, the motor, the propeller each have their own characteristic equations describing performance, power required, power output, efficiency, etc. These equations will show us how the various subsystems interact with each other and affect performance. Where you start in the system depends on your personal circumstance and which component you already have and which components you are able to play around with. In my case I already had the kayak hull so that was one starting point. The power available from the solar panels was determined by my budget at the time. I could afford three 50 watt panels so these two systems would be my entry into the design cycle. From there I can look at different motors, make sure that mat they match up with the panel and once I've got that match sorted out I can select a propeller to go with the motor. The hull has a characteristic power curve that varies with velocity. I was able to get drag values using a small simulating program and you can get a power curve that looks like that. For a certain load on the hull it would have a unique drag value at each velocity so you can calculate the power at each velocity as the drag force multiplied by the velocity. The solar panel has a graph that characterizes voltage and current. Sometimes they supply this graph with the panel, other times they simply tell you what the open circuit voltage is, they tell you what the short circuit current is and they would also give you the maximum power point values for voltage and current that should correspond to the actual rated power for that solar panel. Now note that the rated power for a solar panel is dependent on solar irradiation standardized as the value output at a thousand watt per square meter uh, power from the sun. The solar panel can then further be represented by a power curve which would look something like that once again 
voltage, power, and that point there would correspond to the maximum power point over there. The electric motor can be analyzed and the graphs would typically have torque on the x-axis you'll have power rotational velocity current and efficiency all on the y-axis these graphs would typically be for a constant voltage and with power giving you a very symmetrical graph and you would have efficiency that looks something like that have current on that curve over there and speed would be the inverse of that so at maximum torque you would require maximum current at no load you have minimum current and maximum speed that point there is efficiency maximum efficiency you'll notice that maximum efficiency does not coincide with maximum power in a follow-up video I will show how you can derive these curves from very limited input variables typically supplied with electric motors and also how you can simplify those to a few basic rules of thumb in order to arrive at the critical points required for a system you don't need the entire graph if you only want maximum efficiency that is the only point you'll be interested in so you'll be interested in the power output at this constant voltage the current required as well as the rotational velocity right the propeller gets a little tricky there are no simple equations describing propeller behavior you cannot really solve propeller performance analytically you need to take a numerical approach if you're lucky enough you would have access to propeller curves that give you the advance ratio relationship with efficiency advance ratio is a function of diameter velocity through the water as well as rotational velocity and for a particular propeller once again you only have one particular operating point at which you get maximum efficiency that would correspond to maximum thrust for that given rotational velocity what I'll do when I have a look at the propeller in detail is uh, to give you an idea of how power required, torque, efficiency and all of that change as you play around with diameter, pitch and uh, blade area. Once you take into account all the efficiency losses throughout the system you end up with a reduced power and you can let's say call that panel power and you can work out the overall propulsive efficiency by simply dividing the real power available from the panel power and that would typically be in the order of 50 percent if you really know what you're doing and you've really optimized everything you can push that up uh, 55 maybe but 60% uh, is really not very realistic and uh, if you want to be conservative rather aim for 45 or thereabouts it's nice to have a ballpark figure 
for this efficiency because we'll need that in matching the propeller when we finally get to designing the propeller just as a starting point it's an iterative process but uh, useful to have a starting point in the following video where I look at the characteristics of the solar panel I will also show how you can compare the motor and the panel and evaluate the compatibility to get best, best performance from a particular motor and panel pair and in the video following up on that where I look at the motor characteristics I will explain how you can remedy any mismatch between the motor and the solar panel. Once you've found a motor that is a good match for the solar panel, in other words the motor would absorb all the available power from the panel at exactly the point where itself operates at maximum efficiency, you can then use that rotational velocity as the design input for selecting a propeller. Once you've gone through this exercise uh, you have a very good understanding of making best use of additional parts such as a buck converter. Uh, if you want to use batteries you can now quite easily determine what power output would give you best range, what power output would give you best performance. You can upgrade your motor to a brushless motor and you can work out how that would match up with your panel, how you would calculate a new optimum propeller. You can work out performance for different hulls, you can work out performance for different loads. So for those who are interested in the more technical details, uh, stay tuned. I'll be covering each of these subsystems in more detail later.